one of the most celebrated artists of the group known as the Bloomsbury Group, Vanessa Bell, studied at the Royal Academy of Arts. In 1910, Vanessa Bell would visit a major exhibition of postmodernist paintings that held the work of such well-known artists such as a, uh, Vincent van Gogh and Pablo Picasso, amongst many others. This exhibition left uh, such an impact on Bell. Her own work would take a drastic turn toward abstraction that had a more simplified form. By the time the second post-impressionist exhibition took place, it would be displaying her own work, organized by modern art critic Roger Fry. Bell with Fry, along with British painter Duncan Grant, formed an arts collective known as the Omega Workshops. Here, Vanessa Bell would excel with textile design and would immediately be recognized for her interior design. And though much of her work seems to be overshadowed by other artists she had uh, close relationships with during this time, one thing that she is well known for, at least in recognition, is the work she had done for her sister, in which she had designed all of the dust jackets for her sister's novels. Of course, her sister being Virginia Woolf, these dust jackets have been some of her most recognized work today. And today, we will be giving a quick introduction to some of Virginia Woolf's most recognized works, along with some historical background, and why she is considered one of the most prolific novelists of the early 20th century. Born in 1882 in South Kensington, London, Adeline Virginia Stephen was the seventh child of eight in the blended family of Julia Jackson and celebrated essayist Leslie Stephen. She was homeschooled for much of her early life and began studying at a young age the Victorian classics. Her father had an extended library in which she would take full advantage of. Her father, having personally known many of the giants that wrote during the Victorian period, such as Thomas Hardy and uh, Henry James, in 1897, uh, two years prior the death of her mother, Virginia began to study at the Ladies' Department of King's College in London, where she would stay until 1901. This would have a major impact on Virginia, as she would uh, be introduced to early reformers of uh, women's higher education and would be involved in the women's rights movements of her time. Her father had encouraged her in her writing and she began to write professionally in uh, 1900, four years before her father would pass away. The death of her father in 1904 would have her remaining family move from Kensington to Bloomsbury where later, along with uh, her sister Vanessa Bell, Virginia's husband, uh, Leonard Wolf, and prominent figures such as E.M. Forster would uh, form the Bloomsbury Group, which had its origins in a smaller group started by Vanessa Bell, which at this time was known as the Friday Group. Virginia Woolf is an author whose work is just as much studied in an academic setting as it is enjoyed for its lyrical prose and compelling observations of modern life. For Woolf, uh, reading was more than just a pastime, but a great personal endeavor, as can be taken from the opening lines of her essay, How Should One Read a Book? The only advice, indeed, that one person can give another about reading is to take no advice. To follow your own instincts, to use your own reason, to come to your own conclusion. She goes on then to express how one, when reading, should separate their typical biases and think with a mind that silences what has come to be uh, expected when reading. Reminding us that, above all, uh, reading is a pleasurable experience that one takes in while uh, in solitude, but remains in company by leaving all preconceived notions at the door. 
By forcing ourselves into the world of another, we are separated from ourselves, and in this, find company. Do not dictate to your author, try to become him. Be his fellow worker and accomplice. As stated earlier, Wolf has been considered by many to be one of the greatest novelists of modernist literature. This, of course, is due to many reasons, uh, reasons that may not have been as recognized at the time as they are now. She was a leader of the stream of consciousness style of writing, such as that found in Miss Dalloway, not following a linear narrative such as that found in Orlando, and was able to express the fear of change in her novels, such as the uh, uh, To the Lighthouse, which expressed the anxieties of the ever-changing world of the time. In a work such as The Waves, Wolf gives the reader six monologues that explore identity, individuality, and society as a whole. This novel, often considered her most ambitious and accomplished work, along with the ones mentioned, is a clash of poetry and prose in a style that takes the traditional novel and bases it on pure aesthetic emotion. A poem with its development in prose, the immaterial voices are in constant deferral, dismantling and uh, reconfiguring a uh, perception of self and individuality. What makes this piece so compelling is that it can be read, though not necessarily, as a direct acknowledgement of the conscious condition or inclination of the emergence of the developing uh, sentiments of the time not only with the uh, perpetual confrontation of new ideas, but the way in which the individual was in constant adjustment within the way they lived there every day. What is presented in the waves is not what is at the front of the conscious subject, but what is found in the back. There is no understanding of the self in general, nor of the world in general, but six voices that alternate in acceptance and rejection of their own faults. In doing so, these voices approach the fundamental questions of ontology. Without coming to a complete synthesis, um, at least in realization of a coherent justification, how one goes about existing, as in to be in the world, the question posed was of the greatest importance to the individual, even if it only endured in the back of the mind. Much of these questions were circulating in philosophical circles around Europe, and though could be found much earlier, it would later be an unavoidable movement less than a decade after the publication of The Waves, a philosophy in which the individual seeks to be themselves, not cognizing the object, but makes substantial the being of the thinker. It is no wonder that a work such as Jean Balsarche's uh, Being in Nothingness has been used as a lens to interpret much of uh, Wolf's work. In order to use new words properly, you would have to invent a whole new language. And that, there is no doubt we shall come to it, is not at the moment our business. Our business is to see what we can do with the old English language as it is. How can we combine the old words in new orders so that they survive, and so that they create beauty, so that they tell the truth? That is the question. Now, since this is a bit of a shorter introduction, and it being Virginia Woolf, in which a 10-minute video could not scratch the surface, I'll provide in the uh, description below not only uh, further reading material, but as well uh, links to other videos that either review her work, give opinions on her novels, or whatnot. This includes a, uh, an analysis of Miss Dalloway by Noah over at Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse, 
as well as uh, Shelley uh, Swearinger's discussion of Miss Dalloway. A summary and analysis of the short story, the mark on the wall put out by the Codex Cantina. And if there's anyone else that has a channel and watching this and has a video on Wolf, be sure to uh, mention it in the comments and I'll, I'll uh, add it to the list. And I'll try to find enough to uh, start a playlist. But for now, that'll be all from me with uh, this introduction. And if you'd like to hear more on a specific work of hers, be sure to uh, mention that in the comments as well. And I can uh, certainly try to do that. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.